Hey everybody, welcome back. Let's continue with our free code camp walkthrough of CSS Grid by building a magazine. Okay, so we've covered a lot of grounds and this is the final video in this playlist. So let's get started. But before we continue, what I want to do is I want to click here so that we have our preview on an entire new page. Okay, so this is what we have done so far. We've made a lot of progress, but there's just a few things that we need to work. Let's get it done. So for step 71, we want to create a list title. I will also create a list subtitle selector. Let's set the color property to 00BEEF. Okay. So where is it? Our list. Yeah. So this is our title and our list title and our list subtitles. Now let's start the last session of the magazine, which is the images, which we have right here. So what we want to do is we, we know that they are wrapped in an aside element. So we want to target that class. Let's call it image wrapper dot image wrapper that's how we're going to target it because it's a class and then i set the display to a uh, grid let us also go ahead and uh, say grid template columns let's give it a value of 2 fr 1 fr Let's say grid template rules. Let's give it a value of repeat three main content like so. Okay, this will give our grid rules. This will give our grid rules that are just in height based on the content, but columns that remain a fixed width based on the container. So let's have a look. So this is what we have here, our uh, grid for the images. But as you can see, the images are very close to one another. We need some gap or space between them. So let's continue. The gap property, okay, like I was saying, the gap property is a shorthand way to set the value of column gap and row gap at the same time. Okay, so if you want to set a gap for the columns and the rows at the same time, just use gap property. And what happens is if you give the gap property just one value, it will use that one value you gave it for both column gap, gap and row gap. But if you give it two values, then it will use the first value for the row gap and then the second value for column gap. So. In our case, what we want to do is we want to give it a gap property and then we'll give it a value of just two rem. So it will use two rem for both column gap and also use two rem for row gap as well. All right, now as you can see, we have some space between our images here. Interesting, let's continue. Okay, so just like we have the gap, we also have a property called place items now place items is also a shorthand when you don't want to write justify items and then align items separately so when you write place items and you give it just one value it applies that one value for both align items and then place and then justify items but if you give it two values then it's used that the first value for align items and then the second value for justify items okay so let's just say place items for our image wrapper and let's give it a value of center okay all right we are getting closer and closer now let's create an image dash one to select the image the first image let's also select the third image by saying image dash three three and 
let's give them a grid column of uh, one minus one so what this will do is that to allow the first and third images to span the full width of the grid so let's have a look at it yes as you can see here this is the first image which spans the full width of the grip grid the same for hmm, this one is not spanned the full width let's see okay that's strange I'm not sure why yeah okay so that's because I, sh I forgot the dot okay so I have to bring the dot because it's a class and let's say dots and let's see yeah so now we have the first image spanning the full width of the grid this one is also spanning the full width of the grid all right okay now let's do some media queries but before that let me come here if you are on chrome uh, or any other browser that you own just type click this three dot here you see more tools or something similar if you're not on chrome go to developer tools okay now you can see uh various screen sizes you can scroll and see how the page looks like on various screen sizes okay so now as we are coming to do the media queries let's start with 720 pixels so we say media for only screen so this is the syntax i'll bring my brackets and i'll say max width max width colon and i'll say 720 pixels okay all right so let me come here and when you look closely to this side you see the size so i'll come here and say scroll to 720 okay so this is 720 pixels so whenever we have anything 720 pixels or less this is the media or this is the style that we want to add so first thing we want to do is we want to create an image wrapper selector and we say give it a grid template columns with a value of uh, one fr okay so i forgot end here we should bring end this will collapse the three images into one column on smaller screen sizes so let's see where's the three images yeah as you can see look at the difference here so this is the difference as you can see we have this right here we have this which is sitting next to this text here and then we have this one but if the screen size is smaller than 720 then you see everything is in one column okay now let's add some unique style for screen sizes that are smaller than 600 pixels so i'm going to say at media only screen and uh, bring my brackets i'll say max width let's say 600 pixels now say dot text with with like so images let's say grid template columns let's give it one fr okay this will collapse your bottom text area into a single column on screen sizes okay so let's see what happens yeah now as you can see this is not on the left while the images are on the right but rather it's just one single column so they're sitting on top of the images which is not the case if the screen size is slightly larger like this okay 
all right so we're almost there but we still have a few things we need to do so let's first let me reset this lesson because i already or i already done some work earlier so for the third media query we will say at media only screen and bring our brackets let's say max width this time we are targeting even smaller screens which is 550 pixels so we'll say dot hero dash title let's say font size let's give it six rem okay so now we are working on our on smaller screen size so this is slightly smaller on smaller screen sizes then when the screen size is bigger it becomes bigger as well so let's do something similar for the subtitle so we'll say dot yeah this is what we are looking at we we'll say dot hero subtitle let me bring comma another one we say dot author comma dot uh, quote comma dot uh, list title and then let's set the font size to 1.8 rem like so Okay, now let's work on the let's work on the social icons dot social icons and for social icons want to give it a selector of a font size to rem to rem like so Finally, let's do text. And for text, let's do a font size uh, of uh, 1.6 rem, like so. Okay, so on smaller screen sizes, we have smaller text, and uh, yeah, it looks good that way. So when the screen size is slightly larger, you see our text also increases which is exactly how we want it great now one more step before we finish everything so let's add one more media query we'll say media only screen and uh, bring out brackets or parentheses let's say max width and let's say 420 pixels now let's do dot hero title let's say font size 4.5 rem let's see how it looks like okay so now we have our app or our magazine page finished and the media queries are also working so on different screen sizes we have made provisions for that and i think it is looking quite good okay so that's the end of it if you followed along to this far congratulations you've done well and before i end I will once again encourage you to have a look at this article here on CSS Grid. It dives deep on CSSTricks.com. Sorry, CSSTricks.com. And it dives deep into the whole CSS Grid. And you can learn a lot from it. So I highly encourage you to have a look at it. All right. So this way we'll end it. If you've enjoyed this video, do well to give it a thumbs up. And also, if I encourage you to subscribe to the channel as well so that if i post future videos you can get to know of it all right 
this is where we end this one and see you in the next one bye bye